This is Lesson 9 of the Subnetting.net video series on how to subnet. This lesson covers advanced topics such as VLSM and route summarization. Even though this lesson is called Advanced Topics, don't be intimidated. These topics are actually quite easy once you understand how they work. Plus, you already have enough knowledge from the previous lessons to answer all of these questions. VLSM stands for Variable Length Subnet Mask. Really, that's just a fancy way of saying we can divide a single subnet into multiple smaller subnets with different subnet masks. Let's start with an example that doesn't use VLSM, and then afterwards we'll show you an example that does. Suppose you have the network 192.168.1.0 slash 25 and suppose you want to separate that network into four subnets that can handle 28 hosts each. Let's use our cheat sheet while we figure this out. This is almost just like question type 3, except that we are given a starting subnet mask instead of using the default subnet mask. In this case, since the first octet begins with 192, we have a class C address, which means our starting subnet mask would have been the default subnet mask of slash 24, but since a subnet mask is specified as slash 25, we use that as our starting mask instead. Now we find the lowest power of 2 that is greater than or equal to 4. That is 4, which means we need two subnet bits. Now we add 2 to slash 25 and we get slash 27. Let's check to make sure we have enough host bits left over to accommodate 28 hosts per subnet. 32 minus 27 equals 5 host bits. We look in the bits column and see that 2 to the 5th power is 32 total addresses. 32 minus 2 gives us 30 hosts per subnet. Since we only need 28 hosts per subnet, our subnet mask of slash 27 is sufficient to satisfy the requirements, so our answer would be slash 27. Now I want to point out something interesting. With two subnet bits and five host bits, we have seven total bits, which is 128 total available addresses to work with. Our goal of four subnets and 28 hosts per subnet means we need four times 28, or 112 total addresses. But now suppose our goal was three subnets of 35 hosts each. 3 times 35 equals 105, which is still less than 128, and also less than 112, so you would be tempted to guess that it would work, but it turns out it doesn't. That's because three subnets still requires us to use two bits for subnets, so we still only have five bits left for hosts, or 30 hosts per subnet. Therefore, 35 hosts won't work. So if the question had asked us to create three subnets of 35 hosts each, there would be no answer because this would be impossible with a slash 25 subnet mask. But if we lower the subnets from 3 down to 2, then it would work because we would gain an extra host bit, and then we would have 64 minus 2, or 62 hosts per subnet available to use. So now that we've seen an example that doesn't require VLSM, let's try one where we need to use a variable length subnet mask. Let's use the same network of 192.168.1.0 slash 25, but this time we will divide our network into three subnets of different sizes. Suppose we want one subnet of 50 hosts, one subnet of 25 hosts, and one subnet of 8 hosts. What subnet masks would we use? Before we start, we want to order the subnets from the largest number of hosts to smallest, but in this case it is already ordered that way, so we don't have to change it. To make this easier to manage, let's start by labeling the subnets A, B, and C. Now let's make a chart to help us visualize our goal. We'll start by entering in our networks. Our first network requires 50 hosts, so we're going to add 2 to that to make it 52, and then find the first power of 2, the lowest power of 2, that is greater than or equal to 52. That is 64, so we need 6 bits for hosts. Our IP range is going to go from 0 to 64. 
we start at zero simply because that's where this network begins. So from zero, it's actually 64 minus one. 64 is the start of the next network. So we go from zero to 63. The number of hosts that can be accommodated is 64 minus two or 62. And our subnet mask, since we're in the fourth octet, we begin at 24, 24, 25, 26 is slash 26. Our second network requires 25 hosts. Add two is 27. The first power of two that is greater than or equal to 27 is 32, so we need five host bits. Our range is going to go from 64, because we left off at 63. 64 plus 32 is 96. That's the start of the next network, so this one's going to go from 64 to 95. The number of hosts we can have is 32 minus 2 is 30, and our subnet mask is going to be 24, 25, 26, 27, slash 27. Our last network requires eight hosts. We're going to add two, that's 10. The lowest power of two that is greater than or equal to 10 is 16. This is why we had to add two, because otherwise you might have chosen eight. 16 means we need four bits. We're going to have 16 hosts, so it's going to go from 96 to 96 plus 16 is 112. 1 minus that is 111. So this IP range goes from 96 to 111. The number of hosts we can handle is 14. And our subnet mask will be 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, slash 28. Now we can write our final answer by joining the network IDs this is our starting network ID from the IP range column together with the subnet masks like this. So you can see we start at zero for the first one and we have slash 26. Our second network begins at 64 and it's a slash 27. And our final network is 96 and it's a slash 28. This is the answer. We now have separated the network into multiple subnets of different sizes, which is also called a variable length subnet mask. I want to point out something. When we were calculating our subnet mask, we had 6 bits and we counted from 24, 25, 26 to get to 6 bits for slash 26. There's another way we could have calculated that, which is simply to subtract 6 from 32. So 32 minus 6 is 26. 32 minus 5 is 27. 32 minus 4 is 28. It's important to understand that, and you'll see why in a moment. Let's do one more. Suppose our network is 150.208.48.0/20, and you want to divide it up into networks as shown. First, we'll reorder the subnets by number of hosts from highest to lowest. Now we'll name our networks. We'll create our chart and enter in the network names. The first network needs 2,000 hosts, so let's find the lowest power of 2 that is greater than or equal to 2002. That's 2048, so we need 11 bits. The number of hosts will be 2048 minus 2, or 2046. The subnet mask is 32 minus 11 which is 21. Our IP range is going to begin with our network ID and then it's going to be 2048 plus that. So let's find our block size for a slash 21 subnet mask. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Our block size is 8. Since we're in the third octet we'll be adding 8 to 48 which is 56 and that's the start of our next network. So this one is one minus that, which would be dot .55.255. Our next network needs 1,000 hosts. The lowest power of two is 1,024, so we need 10 bits for that. The number of hosts will be 1,022, and our subnet mask is 32 minus 10, or slash 22. Let's calculate the block size. We're in the third octet, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Our block size is 4. Our starting IP 
is 150.208.56.0, one higher than where we left off. We're going to add 4 to the third octet, so 56 plus 4 is dot 60. One less than that will be dot 59.255. Dot Our third network needs 500 hosts. 512 means we need 9 bits. The number of hosts will be 510. The subnet mask will be 32 minus 9 or slash 23. Again, let's calculate the block size. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Our block size is 2. Our network's going to start at 60.0. The next network is going to start at .62.0, so this one will go to 1 minus that, which is .61.255. Our next network needs 200 hosts. 256 tells us we need 8 bits. The number of hosts would be 254, and our subnet mask would be 32 minus 8, which is slash 24. Remember in lesson 5, we showed you that any subnet mask that's on the boundary of an octet has a block size of 1. So we can tell right off the bat that slash 24, that's going to be a block size of 1. Since our next network starts at 62.0, the one after that will be .63.0, and 1 minus that will be 62.255. The last network needs 100 hosts. The first power of 2, which is greater than or equal to 102, is 128, which means we need 7 bits. The number of hosts is 128 minus 2, or 126, and the subnet mask is 32 minus 7, which is slash 25. Counting up from 24, 24, 25, means our block size is 128. Now we're in the fourth octet, so our IP is going to start at 63.0 and go to 1 less than .63.128 which is 63.127. Now that we've finished filling out our chart, we can write down our answer. Each network begins at the starting IP and has a subnet mask as shown. So 48.0 slash 21, the next one's gonna be 56.0 slash 22. The last one would be 63.0 slash 25. This is our final answer. Now let's take a look at route summarization, which is taking multiple subnets and combining them into a single rule. This is basically the reverse of VLSM. Let's start with our previous VLSM example. For VLSM, we were given this network and asked to divide it up such that these requirements were met. The answer is these five networks. For route summarization, you would be given these five networks and asked to summarize them. Our answer would be this network. Here's how to calculate the answer. The first step is to write out the networks in order. In this case, they already are in order. Then we write out the starting IP, which is the first network's starting IP. So this is our starting address. For the ending IP, we look at the last network. To figure out where this network ends, this is a slash 25 in the fourth octet. 24, 25. Our block size is 128. So that means the start of the next network is dot 63.128. The ending IP address is one less than that, 63.127. Now all we have to do is find the subnet mask that covers this entire range, from this IP to this IP, with the least amount of wasted address space. To do this, we find the first octet that is different, starting from the left. Well, that's the third octet. Now we subtract the starting IP from the ending IP. And 63 minus 48 equals 15. And this is why we wrote the ending IP on top, in case you were wondering. Now we find the first power of 2 that is greater than 15. Note it's not greater than or equal to, it must be greater. And that is 16. Moving over to the decimal mask value, our subnet mask is going to be 240 in the third octet. So that would be 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So our answer is we need a subnet mask of slash 20 to accommodate this range of IPs. Now here's one more way to answer this question. Once we know the starting 
and ending IP, we could write the starting and ending IP addresses of the network in binary. We only care about the interesting octet, like this. 63 in binary is this. 48 in binary is this. Now we simply count the bits that are all the same. These are 16 bits, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is where it becomes different, so 20 bits are the same, so that's our answer, slash 20. Let's try another example. Suppose you are asked to summarize the following networks. First, let's order them by starting IP. Now let's write down the starting and ending IPs. The starting IP is the beginning of the first network, which is 10.0.0.0. For the ending IP, we look at slash 26 and find the block size. 24, 25, 26. The block size is 64, which means the beginning of the next network is going to be 25.64. So the ending IP address is one less than that, which is 25.63. Now we find the first octet, which is different which is the third octet. We subtract the starting IP from the ending IP and we get 25. Now we find the lowest power of two, which is greater than 25, and that's 32. Sliding over to the right, our decimal mask value for the third octet is 224. That means our subnet mask is 255.255.224.0, or in shorthand, 16, 17, 18, 19 so our subnet mask is slash 19. That's our answer. If you prefer, we could convert the starting and ending IPs into binary, like this. We only care about the octet that's different. And then we count all the bits that are the same. So we have 8, 16, 17, 18, 19. Since the 20th bit differs, our answer is slash 19. And that's all there is to it. This is the end of Lesson 9, which covered advanced subnetting topics.